Sisters and brothers, we gather on this grand day, understanding that we come from different places, hold different values, and cherish different beliefs. Yet today we are united in gratitude. Today, many of you are giving thanks to God and invoking the spirit of God, asking for a special sense of God's presence and guidance. While others may choose to take this time to invoke the acknowledgement of our interconnectedness as human beings. In a world where many cannot study, we are thankful for the achievements, degrees, and honors that we celebrate today. In a world where many have no future, we are thankful for the dreams, hopes, and plans that have been nourished in the community of CCC. In a world where many have no community, we are thankful for the support of mentors, teachers, family, and friends. We give thanks to those who have sacrificed much and for those who have given of themselves in ways that will only be understood with the passage of time. As we look out on our graduates this evening, we are reminded of the rare gift of having been part of their lives during this most crucial time in their lives. What a joy it is to be together on this glorious day, to lift up our graduates and praise their achievements, ever mindful that some who graduate today do so despite many obstacles, juggling family and job responsibilities, poverty, and other struggles and difficulties that could have left many discouraged and ready to give up. But they didn't give up, and we are so proud of them. We celebrate and acknowledge that no one is able to achieve success on their own without igniting the support of parents, family, friends, professors, and trustees, staff, and administration. So we lift up and give thanks to family, friends, and the whole CCC community. And as we go from this wonderful day on different paths to different experiences and different destinies, may our gratitude unite us in the desire of using all that we are and all that we have for the common good so that the reasons to be thankful will fill every life and every day. Amen. Good evening. In my previous position as an academic vice president, one of my favorite events of the academic year was the annual nursing pinning ceremony. Because we had a day and an evening program, we had two pinning ceremonies each year. So I had the pleasure of presiding over 14 such ceremonies during my tenure. When I began to research Corning Community College, I was delighted to learn that the school has a fine nursing program, that we have a beautiful state-of-the-art facility, and that the college has embraced the wonderful tradition of pinning ceremonies. There is nothing quite like the feel of a nursing pinning ceremony. The camaraderie of nursing students is truly something special. The opportunity to celebrate your achievement with each other and with your loved ones is a gift to be treasured. These are the folks, in addition to your professors, who know how hard you have struggled, the late nights, the weekends, the clinicals, but you made it through, and your success tonight is not only a testament to your knowledge and skills, but also a testament to your determination and your will. I think we all have a story of the critical role that a nurse played in our lives. Mine was when my wife was six and a half months pregnant with our first child and went into labor. I'm sure you can imagine the panic, terror, and despair we experienced at that time. Now, nothing against doctors, but a number of the ones who passed on through demonstrated, shall I say, not the most comforting bedside manner. However, it was a trio of neo neonatal nurses that became our bedrock during this most frightening of times. I was in awe of the way they were able to calm my wife and to get her to believe that everything was going to be okay. And then they even had the time and energy to comfort her bumbling husband. Their reassurance and confidence kept us from falling apart. The hospital staff, nurses and doctors were able to keep my son from being born for another two weeks. 
Nathan Patrick Mullaney was born looking very blue and weighing less than four pounds. I'm happy to report that he's now a happy, healthy, and only occasionally annoying sophomore at the University of North Carolina. I tease him that I knew he was going to be a Tar Heel because he was born Carolina Blue. I have no doubt that you'll all play a role in many patients' lives like the one those nurses played for my wife and me. I know this isn't the ceremony you wanted or deserve, but you, more than any other students of the college, know the risks associated with COVID-19. And although the ceremony is virtual, your achievement is very real. The college's pride in you is very real and your joy is very real. Go out and celebrate. You deserve it, nursing class of 2020. Best of luck to all of you. Thank you. Corning Community College nursing class of 2020. What an incredibly unique time in which to launch into a career of registered nursing. When we started our classes together in 2018, we were excited to be the future class of 2020. After all, we were able to tag all our social media school posts with a really cool slogan, hashtag 2020 vision. After almost two full years of nursing classes, we began our last semester. And we're excited to learn that we would be graduating in the International Year of the Nurse as well as the year Florence Nightingale had spoken of when she said in 1870, it will take 150 years for the world to see the kind of nursing I envision. This was it. This was the best year yet to become a new nurse. If someone had asked me in January what three words I felt encapsulated our final semester of nursing school, I would have said exciting, busy, fast. But then in March, a not so little virus called COVID-19 changed everything. The second half of this semester has been a really interesting one, very different from what was originally planned. The sudden scattering of our class and being torn from the hospital and academic setting was a traumatizing experience. But there are some general and personal lessons we learned as a result of the upheaval that I'm not sure we would have learned otherwise. As you look back on these past two years, and in particular this last semester, what three words would you use to describe it? My three words have certainly changed. Instead of exciting, busy, fast, the words I would use now are appreciate, innovation, and unstoppable. I'd like to share some brief thoughts on each of these words. Appreciate, in other words, Make the most of all the time you have with the people you are with whenever you have the opportunity, because you never know when or if you will have that chance again. Perhaps the most traumatic and impactful experience of the COVID-19 quarantine was the quick escalation of social limits. One day, we just had to wash our hands and stay home if sick. Then a few days later, we had to limit our meetings to groups of 100 or less. Then within 48 hours, it could only be in groups of 10 or less. And then overnight, we found out we would not be meeting for class the next day, nor would we be allowed to return to our hospital clinical site to do the work we most love to do. We learned very quickly that life and society could truly turn upside down overnight. And seeing one another in class and study groups is not guaranteed. We now fully appreciate the time we get to spend with others, and we know how to make the most of that time. Innovation. There is a way to adapt to just about everything so that it is still fulfilling, meaningful, and engaging, and yet still within regulated parameters. Being a human, we will almost always prefer human touch, normal contact, and in-person and unmasked encounters rather than online interaction. In-person contact is healthy for us on many psychological, physiological, and spiritual levels. But if you have a pandemic and you have to do everything from home, there's always a way to make it work. You just have to be innovative and find the solution. It is doable. I think the skill of innovation that was thrust upon us is going to 
proved to be one of the most valuable skills we will take with us into our respective workplaces. We were nursing students who had to land on our feet and think outside the box in real time as society went through major and rapid change. We made it through. We did it. We will be able to innovate quickly to make a difference in our patients' lives. Unstoppable. We have incredibly strong leaders and examples on our faculty. As hard as it has been with a sudden switch to online everything, I know it has had to have been vastly harder for our faculty to switch around their lesson plans faster than real time to still help us finish strong and on time. Thank you so much, nursing staff and faculty of Corning Community College for being such a positive, calm example of nursing leadership during this time and for bending over backwards to help us finish the semester strong and graduate from the program. We look forward to making you proud of the nurses we become as we follow in the strong, unstoppable example you have set for us. Corning Community College Nursing Class of 2020, appreciate, innovate, be unstoppable. What an incredibly amazing, frightening, exciting, crazy, and energizing time to be joining the ranks of registered nurses. Thank you to our families, friends, supporters, and even those who may have sought to discourage us on this journey. Without each and every one of you and the impact you made on us, we would not be where we are today. Thank you. Class of 2020, we may not be together today, but we are, hashtag, united, unstoppable, innovative, appreciative, and we always will be. Our class decided to modify the pinning ceremony by inviting a special speaker to address us. When the speaker I am about to introduce was suggested, the class response was a quick and unanimous, yes! Claudia Hale was one of the first sophomore faculty to speak to us at our second year boot camp. And in her opening remarks, she told us, don't fret. Her humor, kindness, and personable nature quickly put us at ease and her slogan, don't fret, became a mantra for us in this last year of school. It's a proven fact that a relaxed brain can absorb information much better than a stressed out brain. And Claudia's gracious, no fret demeanor in our simulation lab classes and pharmacology classes with her made it possible for us to truly listen and absorb what she was teaching. Claudia, you have made a greater impact on our lives than we can express. Your care for both people and the environment has inspired us all, and we have a very small token of our appreciation for you. This is a reusable bag that we made for you with a quote from Florence Nightingale, which says, the most important practical lesson that can be given to nurses is to teach them what to observe. And that's what you've done for us, Claudia. Thank you for training us to be good observers and critical thinkers in the clinical setting and for teaching us, most importantly, to never fret. Ladies and gentlemen, Claudia Hale. Everyone, congratulations to all our nursing graduates here. I'm so proud of everybody. Um, this is a uh, I have to admit, this is a little awkward for me. I'm not used to doing things virtual. So in my mind, I have to visualize seeing you all sitting there in your whites, holding your red rose, waiting for pinning. Um, I'm really not a good virtual person and I truly miss you all. So anyway, what I wanna share with you tonight, it's like, what is the most important things as a nurse and maybe as a person too, I don't know. Um, first of all, Everything is connected. Everything interacts with everything else. Um, what you say, what you do, um, it's all connected. And you as a nurse, you really do make a difference in people's lives. 
Um, I just can't emphasize that enough. It's like when you're out there taking care of people, they're at their most vulnerable times in their life. And you're taking care of people when they're having those big events in their life, like births and dying and severe illnesses. So these are crucial times in people's lives. And we as nurses are there to help them with that. So you really do make a difference. No matter what you do in your life as a nurse, remember that you always make a difference. So as a nurse, you want to be your true self, your real self, because people can tell when you're fake. When I was working, we had a nurse, um, we called her the song and dance nurse, because she was kind of boisterous and loud and funny, but the patients loved her. She was real. Um, we all have our own way of being real, so you have to be your best self when you're out there taking care of patients. Um, you have to be connected. You have to be present with your patients there. And I just want to share this little poem by Maya Angelou that I think is really relevant for us. And I think when I'm working with you that I get this across to you. <clears throat> so Maya Angelou wrote, people will forget what you say. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So remember that because it's like, you know, you don't have to even say stuff sometimes and you get across how you feel about a person. So just remember we're all connected, we're all together and that you do make a difference. The second thing I want to share with you is to trust yourself and care for yourself. You have to take care of yourself out there in the real world. I know I always talk about the real world like it's different than our real world, but you know, I'm talking about when you're out there in the healthcare system. So take care of yourself and always do the right thing. So when you're working, it's real important as a nurse to remember, you know, our profession and what the right thing is. But when you're out there working, everybody else might not be doing the right thing. So you have to do the right thing. And I just think of some historic things, the Tuskegee um, syphilis experiment. Those nurses were hired by the health departments and they were complicit in not giving good care, not advocating for their patients. So you as a nurse have to do the right thing and say, no, this is wrong and not do these things. The other thing I said about caring for yourself is, uh, again, with the right thing, if you think you need to wear a mask, if you think you need to do something, you have to do it. There's not always gonna be somebody there to say, hey, this is what we have to do. You have the brain, you have the knowledge, so you need to do the right thing. So take care of yourself. Okay, the last little thing I want to talk about, and this is short, but, you know, it's from my heart all the way. Okay, circumstances. We don't control the time we live in or the circumstances of what's going on around us, like this pandemic right now. But we do control how we respond to it. So you have a choice of how you respond. In life, when you think about it, there's always choices. They might be bad or worse, but you always have a choice. So just remember that how you respond is a big deal here, and how you respond to the circumstances. Okay, well, I miss you guys all. I just have one final little thing I wanna say. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys realize that, I should say guys, <laughs> I don't know if you realize that, I'm a gardener and I found this little thing about seeds and I think you guys are my seeds here so it's go it goes like this you must scatter the seeds so I'm scattering the seeds out there you must love the seeds have complete faith in the seeds and only then will they become all that you've hoped for so the best of everything I miss you guys all and I wish I could see you all in person and and give you hugs and good luck. And welcome to our first ever SUNY Courting Community College Nurse Education Virtual Pinning. It is my distinct pleasure to join you on this momentous occasion. You have earned all the joy, the pride, and relief what comes with today. 
I would like to offer a very warm congratulations to our 76 nursing graduates. Each of you has achieved an important milestone in your educational journey that is celebrated with this evening's virtual pinning celebration. I'm sad that we're not able to be together in person to celebrate you. I know that you have worked so hard over the past two years, but I'm thankful that we do have the ability with technology to celebrate you. I also hope that you still take time out with your family and your friends to celebrate today. The work that you've done to get to this point is to be celebrated. The class of 2020 is near and dear to my heart for a number of reasons. You are the first class to complete four semesters under my director as leadership. You are graduating during a pandemic and you are graduating in the year of the nurse. When I think about what today was supposed to be like when you started this journey two years ago, it really makes me reflect on our societal changes that have occurred due to COVID-19. We are dealing with some uncertain times, and this is definitely one of those times where we're all just trying to figure out what is going on and what life is going to bring us. I think entering the nursing profession in these times brings a new challenge for you. It brings a new challenge for all of us in healthcare. I thought you never could imagine starting your first job with so much uncertainty. Starting a job with fear, not knowing what it's going to be like. Uncertain how you're going to care for your patients during a pandemic. But I want you to know that you are prepared to do this. You are prepared for this challenge. Nurses are the largest segment of the healthcare system and play a vital role in influencing healthcare policies and healthcare decisions. Today, the role of nursing is complex and requires a lifetime commitment of learning and development. Healthcare is always evolving, it's never stagnant. Today, you are entering a healthcare system that has drastically changed over the last several months due to the COVID healthcare crisis. Know that you have received a quality education from SUNY Corning Community College Nurse Education Department. Know that this education will allow you to confront the complexities of healthcare and provide the best patient-centered care that your patients and families deserve. Never be complacent. Always be willing to work with your colleagues. Always collaborate and be open and honest with them without losing object objectivity. Accept new challenges and incorporate your newly learned knowledge into your practice. Remain motivated and inspired and responsive to change because change will come. Always be culturally sensitive to your patients and your family's needs. Always practice with an ethical and legal framework without sacrificing your patients and family's dignity. Make a difference in the lives of those you touch. You are all empowered to promote the nursing profession and impact the healthcare system and the people that you will serve. To the graduates of the class of 2020, on behalf of SUNY Corning Community College Nurse Education, faculty and staff, congratulations to each of you. We are so proud of you and how you handle everything that was thrown your way during this pandemic. You never wavered from your goals of achieving your education and becoming a nurse. The road ahead will be hard. The journey will be long. But we are all in this together, and you are prepared to make a difference in the world. I welcome you to the profession, and I wish you the best of luck as you begin your career as a nurse. Congratulations. Marie. Andrews.
Samantha Bahenka. Vanessa Barnes. Sinead Bond. Ashley Boyer. Sarah Braveman. Melanie Cartagena. Taylor Crawford. Alyssa Kraut. Amanda Denson. Stephanie Dubler. Adam Dubois. Lydia Fillmore. Christina Foglia. Meredith Foster. Hannah Fox. Diane Frampton. Diane Galbraith. Christine Gessner. Shailene Graves. Alyssa Hall. Carissa Hamilton. Riley Hancock. Jessica Hand. Shannon Havens. Cassandra Hayes. Samantha Held. Raymond Komoka. Emily Hotelling. Natalie Hughes. Yasmin Hussein. Nicole Jane. Emily Jerzak. Cheyenne Kepner. Emily Knapp. Melissa Kraut. Sarah Kuno. Gretchen Larison. Erica Lewis. Virginia Livermore Johnson. Christy Manilow. Terry McCollum. Alice McDonald. Brian McClinko. Carissa Miller. Crystal Miller. Matthew Miller. Hillary Millard. Shannon Nugent. Aaron O'Connor. Emily Orr. Tanya Palmer. Candy Partridge. Holly Poston. Alexander Precipio. Karen Purdy. Lindsay Putney. Sarah Roberts. Katherine Rominger. Faith Scalia. Ann Scott Scott. Corin Smith. Kayla Smith. Samantha Snyder. Samantha Taylor. Rachel Thurston. Simone Trimble. Christopher Vanderpool. Tanya Venel. Jennifer Waddles. Barbara White. Arthur Williams. Mallory Wilson. JC Young. Yang Bing Zhou. The International Code for Nurses. In the full knowledge of the obligations I am undertaking, I promise to care for the sick with all the skill and understanding I possess, without regard to race, creed, color, politics, or social status, sparing no effort to conserve life, to alleviate suffering, and to promote health. 
I will respect at all times the dignity and religious beliefs of the patients under my care, holding in confidence all personal information entrusted to me and refraining from any action which might endanger life or health. I will endeavor to keep my professional knowledge and skill at the highest level and to give loyal support and cooperation to all members of the health team. I will do my utmost to honor the International Code of Ethics applied to nursing and to uphold the integrity of the nurse. Congratulations, class of 2020. It seems like just yesterday we were sitting together in boot camp and I was asking you to write letters to yourselves that you would be reading right now, thanking yourselves for the hard work and persistence that allowed you to get right here and this moment in time. And you may remember I asked you to promise me that if you had moments of doubt, I would never read your letter, but I asked that you would come to my office and I would have the letter for you that you were writing and you could read it on your own if you needed a little bit of extra encouragement from your graduating self to keep going. And you know what? None of you asked to read that letter until right now. So I hope you enjoyed reading those and thanking yourself for the hard work that you needed to do to get to this moment in time. So now it's our turn to thank you. As you prepare to enter the world of work as graduate nurses and soon to be registered nurses, I ask you to reflect upon what type of leader you would like to be. That is not an easy question. What a strange time in your life to be completing your degree and preparing to launch. On the one hand, you are entering this field at a time when the appreciation of your service is at an all time high. But on the other hand, our world is really frightening right now, and you're also entering your profession at a time when the fear is at an all-time high. So you're entering the world when the rewards and risks of your profession are equally compelling. People will be looking for you to provide them with the comfort and certainty you yourself are craving. All while you may be placing yourself at risk just by serving your community in the profession you chose. Your resiliency at this time will come from focusing on what you can control and be certain of. And that takes me back to my original question. What type of leader do you wish to be? Never doubt, as a nurse in our community, you will be a leader. So be certain of that. What do you, who do you want to be? And in my experience, the most successful leaders are those who do not have an ego invested in always being right, but rather in doing right. And think about that distinction. It may sound subtle, but it isn't. Leaders driven by doing right are the types of leader who can acknowledge their mistakes. And they say it. They say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And they don't stop at that. They learn from their mistakes. They share what they've learned to improve their world. They do not strive to protect their ego, but rather to protect and improve the world they serve. Be that leader. We do not expect you to be perfect. We do not expect you to be fearless. We do not expect you to save the world, but we do expect you to serve the world with compassion and kindness, with courage in the face of fear, and humility and accountability in the face of the mistakes that will be made. Learn from those mistakes. Learn from each other. Learn from those that you serve, especially those that you serve. They will tell you what they need, and they don't expect you to be perfect either. This is an uncertain time. We do not have all of the answers, but what I am certain of, just because you made it here, not quite on the stage we thought, but nonetheless, the virtual stage. You did it. You made it here. So you have what it takes to keep on going. 
Your learning does not stop here. In fact, I promise you, you are about to learn more in your career than you have learned in the past two years. I promise you that. So keep your mind open to that learning that's in front of you. When you are faced with your patients that you serve, each moment in front of you, I ask you to ask yourself, what is the right thing to do right here? And sometimes that answer is going to be easy and quick. But other times, you're not going to know immediately what that answer is. And those latter moments, do not be afraid to reach out for help. You will learn the most from the times you had to step out of your comfort zone to do that. You're graduating, but you're not done learning. Keep your mind open to the knowledge that has yet to be revealed to you. Your spirit open to the passion that brought you to the field of nursing and kept you going through those moments when you thought, I don't, I don't think I can do this anymore. But you did. That spirit is still with you. Don't lose it. And keep your heart always open to serve with empathy and compassion. So this is it. I wish you the best. Congratulations. Best of success to you. I'm giving you a socially distance appropriate virtual hug. You've already made us proud. Now go serve in even better and exciting ways. Bye-bye. Sisters and brothers, we gather on this grand day understanding that we come from different places, hold different values, and cherish different beliefs. Yet today we are united in gratitude. Today, many of you are giving thanks to God and invoking the Spirit of God, asking for a special sense of God's presence and guidance, while others may choose to take this time to invoke the acknowledgement of our interconnectedness as human beings. In a world where many cannot study, we are thankful for the achievements, degrees, and honors that we celebrate today. In a world where many have no future, we are thankful for the dreams, hopes, and plans that have been nourished in the community of CCC. In a world where many have no community, we are thankful for the support of mentors, teachers, family, and friends. We give thanks to those who have sacrificed much and for those who have given of themselves in ways that will only be understood with the passage of time. As we look out on our graduates this evening, we are reminded of the rare gift of having been part of their lives during this most crucial time in their lives. What a joy it is to be together on this glorious day, to lift up our graduates and praise their achievements, ever mindful that some who graduate today do so despite many obstacles, juggling family and job responsibilities, poverty, and other struggles and difficulties that could have left many discouraged and ready to give up. But they didn't give up, and we are so proud of them. We celebrate and acknowledge that no one is able to achieve success on their own without igniting the support of parents, family, friends, professors, and trustees, staff, and administration. So we lift up and give thanks to family, friends, and the whole CCC community. And as we go from this wonderful day on different paths to different experiences and different destinies, may our gratitude unite us in the desire of using all that we are and all that we have for the common good so that the reasons to be thankful will fill every life and every day. Amen. Class, I know the last thing you wanted to see from me is another video. God knows you've seen enough videos of me over the last couple of years, but look how far you've come. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, these strange times, we think of our hands a lot. You know, what have our hands touched? Do I need to wash my hands? Did I touch my face? 
And it made me think of all the things that you have learned over the last two years in the NSL that have to do with your hands. If you think back and you remember all the shaky hands, they were shaking so badly, you didn't even know if you could give that injection or start that IV. Or the sweaty hands where you couldn't get those darn gloves on because your hands were so sweaty. And then there was that sterile field, you know, your hands went under the sterile field, they went over the sterile field, they touched things that you just didn't want them to touch, but you did it. You did it and you made something that you thought was so hard, so easy. And pretty soon, I know you haven't been in the hospital in a couple of months, but once you get back in there, it's going to be muscle memory that's going to come back and those hands are going to serve you so well. So I know we say all the time to wash your hands, but remember, especially now, to wash those hands and be proud of how far you've come. And from the whole staff of the NSL, Wendy and Joyce and now Tammy, we just want to say thank you for letting us be part of your journey. And we're so proud of you. So go out there, be good nurses, use those hands to help all of your patients and remember to wash those hands. Congratulations. Hi everyone, this is Tammy. Um, I just wanted to um, give you some congratulations on your well-deserved success. Um, nursing school is not easy by no means, but you persevered and now you are all graduate nurses. Yay! As I shared before, in my opinion, nursing, your nursing degree is one of the, the AAS degree is one of the hardest degrees in nursing that you will ever complete. I am so proud of each and every one of you. I wish you all well as you start this journey in your new life. Thank you for allowing me to be part of that journey. And I will end with a quote from Maya Angelou. This statement is so true, so please never forget it. As a nurse, we have the opportunity to heal the heart, mind, soul, and body of our patients, their families, and ourselves. They may not remember your name, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. I wish you all the best in your nursing career. And congratulations. Hi, class of 2020. This is Lisa here. Um, as you all can attest, um, nursing is no easy feat and probably will be one of the most defining, challenging experiences of your life. Um, I just want to say that I feel honored to have been able to be a part of this challenging journey with you. Um, nursing isn't what you do, it's who you are, and you're all awesome individuals, and I want to wish you the best of luck with all of you do, all that you do in your nursing careers. Good luck, and congratulations. Yay! Hi, class of 2020. I just wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate all of you on your success. I'm so very proud of each of you. I'm so thankful that I was able to help many of you and be a part of your journey. Um, when we say it's a journey, <laughs> you know it really is a journey. Um, so I, I wish with all my heart that we could be in person and congratulating all of you and hugging you and, and making you feel um, how proud we are of you. But this, this is the next best thing, so. Um, I wish you all the success in the future. I can't wait to be your colleague rather than um, one of your instructors. I also am just gonna leave you with a short quote. Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you're doing. So you all are not here by chance. You're here because of your own hard work and your passion for nursing. So never forget what brought you to nursing um, as, you, as you go on in your journeys. So congratulations again.
Congratulations! 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 Great job! Congratulations! Good job! Congratulations! Congratulations! Yeah!